Hi everyone, it's July 27, 2021. It's a Tuesday and you're watching me, Nikki, you also known as Faces Trader for the Awesome 10X Global Market Update. Okay, so let's take a look at what happened last night. You could see that from a shift or a rotation, um, this is what's happening. You've got oil, airlines, energy, miners, airspace, um, banking, financials, consumer discretionary materials, getting the green side particularly oil and airlines, and then U.S. cannabis, NASDAQ, biotech, Chinese internet, um, genomics, biotech, social media getting some percentage negative. The biggest negative, of course, is China internet stocks. Let's take a look at that sector specifically. Uh, let's take a look at the biggest losers last night. This happened in your Chinese stocks last night, a continuous sell-off. Again, with your Chinese education stocks falling down. And last night, another drop from uh, Meituan, Dianping, especially, and Dada, as all the delivery units last night were actually shared by the U.S., um, by, by Chinese government, to actually pay the minimum wage to all of their delivery network. You could see that the K-Web has, has gone down 10% last night. This represents the largest uh, Chinese tech uh, internet with the likes of Alibaba, Pintuatua, JD, all suffering at least about 7 8% drops. You're seeing Pintuatua dropping 8% last night to $88. JD falling 8% last night to $66. Your Chinese brokerage firms like Futu and Tiger also falling 7 8%. Alibaba going down 7%. Social media stock going down, uh, like Billy Billy going down 8%, now trading at $87. You're seeing the entire Chinese sell off uh, continuing further for the big tech. Meanwhile, if it's any consolation prize, um, some Chinese stocks didn't actually suffer a big sell off. In particular, new energy vehicles like Neo Xpeng and Li Auto are still steady. They're actually able to try, um, to get out of this Chinese sell off unscathed. Neo is still forty three dollars. Your um, your Xpeng is still forty one dollars. Your Ehang manages to stay above twenty five dollars. Um, this is actually quite a, um, quite a weird thing, but a good thing that Douyu and uh, Agora is able to stay above 4. Douyu is trading above 418 right now. Uh, Agora is trading $27. So uh, let me explain to you why I think Douyu and Agora should be actually spared from this Chinese tech sell-off. And uh, I shared it on my Twitter. Um, this is my Twitter account, at FacesTrader. So right now, what you're seeing is that Agora has enabled a major education customer to deliver live lecture with excellent video quality to thousands of their students in one classroom while keeping the ability to interact with each other at any time. In addition to their core voice and video APIs, uh, Agora has added chat whiteboard APIs to the platform through the acquisition of eSmob and Netless. We've now completed post-acquisition integration for the Chinese market and the integration effort for U.S. and other markets are well underway. I'm looking forward. This is uh, Tony Zhao speaking, the CEO and co-founder of Agora, for supercharging Agora's global developer community with our combined offering. And this is my question for most people. If China's education technology is communist, I'd ask you, wouldn't Chinese public school system continue to use high quality, low latency live lectures and excellent video quality from Agora? Therefore, no matter these Chinese tensions, if you're going to ask me, China will still need to use an internet infrastructure and the most cost efficient manner is, to them, is for them to still utilize Agora. So they will be using the most strategic technological tools to enable real time video learning this is the reason why I think if you focus on what won't change, what won't change is the reliance of all these uh, Chinese education companies, whether it's um, given by the government or some other large entity like a public school system, they would still need to be using and that would not, um, that would not change. I think Agora is very much a winner of that, um, of that trend. And that trend is all about online learning. Now, also, let's take a look at Agora. It is also a winner when it comes to the creator economy, which is a secular trend. Seamless connection between the real world and the metaverse or virtual world and between different metaverses are all powered throughout the, the Agora network. This is the reason why there's a partnership between Agora API with Vive and WePro. And Unity, these are all proofs of that um, relationship. 
Let's understand how creators are leveraging the power of Agora's real-time engagement. Number one, right now, the consumer economy is towards a creator economy. People are making a living sharing their skills, their hobbies, their interests online, whether that be including foreign language teachers, yoga instructors, tutor guides, tour guides, chefs, DJs, musicians, and the like. In just this first quarter of 2021, Real-time voice and view engagements powered by Agora exceeded 50 billion minutes per month for the very first time. And as we're watching the bloom of innovative new use cases built with Agora over the last year, it's very clear that the world is using Agora. Agora, quality, scalability, reliability, ultra-low latency, 60% lower than all their top competition. Those competition are your Twilio with 250 plus global points of presence for rapid network routing and 99% availability, it makes sense why Agora is building a lot of apps, which is now going to be free to leverage for all the innovators, companies that are looking to stand out from the crowd to connect with their audiences and engage with customers to drive business outcomes. Take note that Agora will not charge unless you're using more than 10,000 minutes per month. Take a look, um, if you remove the COVID impact spike in the minutes, they're actually growing with about 146% net dollar expansion rate. And if you take a look at the people checking out, uh, checking the use cases, okay, bringing real-time engagement to extended reality and virtual reality, HTC's Vive. Uh, Agora is enabling live streaming on any device to share immersive experiences for accessible, productive, and enjoyable experiences. This is the next generation of workplace collaboration and entertainment. Also, remote trust solutions. One of Agora's partner, AT.Cash, is using Agora's real-time experience engagement for house closing and notarization, enabling online mandatory in-person meetings, providing verification and enabling services to legal and financial providers. Another emerging use case is a virtual tour where tourists can join a live stream tour directly from their living room. Local guides are introducing the destination, sharing the sites and culture according to the tourist interest with real-time interactions. So let's understand Agora's valuation compared to the U.S. peers, high growth peers. Agora versus Bill, Coupa, CrowdStrike, Datadog, Fastly, MongoDB, Cloudflare, Okta, Shopify, Snowflake, Atlassian, Unity, Viva Systems, Zoom, and Zscaler. All of these high growth peers are trading somewhere in the zone of about 30 to 80 times EV versus revenue. If Agora's growth is growing more than 100% in their minutes and their customer expansion, so far um, there remains a huge valuation gap here. One of main clients of Agora is, of course, Spotify and Clubhouse. That has been well known. You also have a lot of live streaming companies, whether that be Douyin, um, which is uh, the Chinese TikTok. Chinese discounts right now are trading at about 60% or 70% versus a two-year multiple and the forward revenue. So in the last five years, Agora has seen... 100-fold growth in usage among their audio service partners. It used to be just an average of 40 billion minutes of live audio in 2020. Now it's hitting 50 billion minutes. So um, this was a company started in 2014 with companies like YY, Xiaomi, and Douyu as their clients. Global clients are Talkspace, Unity, Clubhouse, and Spotify. Some of their client testimonials. The AirMeet virtual event solution was powered by Agora Live interactive video streaming providing in authentic in-person connection for peer-to-peer -peer networking. Agora is providing that scale that we need along with extensive developer support and documentation. AirMeet events as the audience keeps on increasing. In my view, if you're doing a real-time concert, um, parties, um, most likely Agora is going to be a helping hand for those companies. He's actually using, uh, I saw in their use cases, 
a company like My Condolences is helping people for the funeral services, you're seeing that uh, online gatherings are happening real time. Take a look at what online gatherings happening for sports. So Live Like is creating the best sports viewing experiences in the world using Agora's voice and video call. Agora is helping customers engage their communities with voice and video. We are providing partners with tools they can empower their community within their apps rather than losing out to the social networks and letting all the conversation elsewhere. So I would assume that people are already using sports and social audio. Um, actually, NBA and NFL are likely to be targeted as partners for Agora. Of course, this is not the only company that's handling that. Take a look at the competition. Agora is powering the rise of video chat and real-time engagement streaming. So one of the large competition is, of course, Twilio. Twilio is powering Zendesk, Air Tutors, ZocDoc, Doctors on Demand. Uh, Twilio is, um, and then there, there are other companies like Vonage, partnered with uh, Chegg, Maven, Yogaya, Babylon, that's a health-related uh, company, Babylon Health, Digital Health Startups, Kickstarter, Doctolive. So you could see that as more and more companies integrate real-time engagement, um, we will see, in my view, Agora powering a lot of live shopping and streaming apps. Um, why is it a huge trend? Take note. In one Chinese uh, farmer, one rural farmer said, my best-selling live stream recording has been 20 minutes and we made 6 million yuan, about $928,600 of sales. China's rural farmers are jumping in on the live streaming bandwagon, bringing in millions from Douyin. So um, if you just understand the entire shopping trend, whether it be Yatsan Global, whether it be Shopee C Limited app, and uh, a lot of makeup brands are utilizing live streaming, live streaming farmers making millions. And since China is pro, pro the poor, pro the farmers, I ask you, wouldn't they actually support Agora or even um, all the e-commerce giants who are actually building the logistics platform so that these rural entrepreneurs can sell better and deliver those produce straight to the consumers. So um, understand the first quarter uh, revenues of Agora. API, the revenues in the first quarter was about $300 million. That's actually um, gross profit in the first quarter was $40 million, gross margin of 12%. They're still working out their capex. There's, there's, that's why there's our net losses of about $10 million for the first quarter. However, average monthly active users are increasing 20% and mobile MAUs increase 5%. Quarterly average users are uh, paying $7 million compared to $7.6 million in 2020. Take a look at, um, take a look, of course, at uh, the movements. Last night, uh, it was very obvious that Yatsan Global, Ihang, Doyu Agora, Huya, live streaming is uh, live streaming and EV tolls and gaming and electric vehicles in China are actually being spared the route. Li Auto, Xpeng, Yum China, Neo. So the fact that they're not dropping 30% last night, even when the entire index fell 9% or 16%, if you were doing the 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 leverage uh, for um for Chinese uh, stocks uh, indices, you could say that um, there's a huge relative strength in the live streaming market, mainly because it is a secular trend. Okay, so let's take a look at the Agora chart here. Agora is now trading with the highest volumes ever since for the last year on account of this after school crackdown. Agora is trading from $34 to as low as $24 or a massive 30% drop in the last two days. In our view, those charts can still fall another 10 to 20%, here about $20 or even further lower here at 15. However, we see value in this name. And um, we see that the company Agora has $1 billion in cash to actually support the company in case it falls. So I, I don't think that Agora will necessitate uh, a buyback program. But I do think that uh, with Clubhouse, Spotify growing well, and the potential for live streaming, the company can actually institute. I'm not sure if they're doing it, but um, it is a value play in my view. Um, let's read further on uh, the Beijing crackdown. 
Um, Beijing is calling out Amazon, ByteDance, NetEase for violating user rights in latest crackdown. So last week, uh, China has called out apps made by Amazon, NetEase, and TikTok owner ByteDance, as well as 142 other apps for just violating users' rights. China's app, NetEase Dashen, are a community for gamers. Um, they, it says here that they've illegally collected user information. So it's more about the privacy and security. Douyun Light, which is a version of TikTok's Chinese app made for lower-end phones, didn't clearly display app information while Huya, a major live streaming platform backed by Tencent, was found to have deceived, misled, or forced users to turn on certain permissions according to the ministry. So um, all of this crackdown has to do with cybersecurity and privacy. It says here that apps that violated the cybersecurity law have included Sunlay, which is a popular download manager, iPhone, and cryptocurrency community Pishitie, which shut down the app and website in mainland China last week. The 145 apps must take corrective measures before July 26 or face punishment. In the apps, uh, in the last few years, apps that were named by the ministry were allowed to continue operations. And the truth is only a few percentage was shut down. Example, out of the 41 apps first called out as problematic, only three were shut down and only one of them is unavailable. So the MIIT, as well as the Cyberspace Administration of China, a powerful agency that covers technology and internet, is leading a cybersecurity review, of course, with Didi Global, Didi Chusheng. And um, they've ordered that app from taking on new users so far. Regulators have been working on strengthening consumer data protection, punishing the apps that collect too much data after rampant data leaks in the country expose information for millions of online users. So excessive user data unrelated to their core service, forcing users to give uninformed consent on how their data is being used. These regulations are serving Categories including messaging, online shopping, payment, ride hailing, short video, live streaming, mobile games. Beijing has been working to stamp out personal privacy breaches in the world's largest internet market with about a billion users. They've drafted the Personal Information Protection Law, setting up fines of up to 50 million yuan or at least 5% of a company's annual revenue for such offenses. So what you're seeing is that this crackdown is obviously hitting a huge blow in the companies in China. So Tencent has been falling uh, from about 566. It's now trading at 456. How huge will these uh, breach of privacy laws actually impact Tencent? Um, the first support of Tencent is here about 440 and a $400 support. So uh, just showing to you the aftermath of these Chinese regulatory crackdowns. Take a look what's happening with your Alibaba right now. Alibaba is now trading 180 Hong Kong, something that has never reached before March 2020 during the pandemic. So um, we're probably going to try to assume that it's going to hit that 170 Kangpe for Alibaba. Let's take a look at other uh, Chinese technology firms. So... Um, this drop is, of course, affecting all the companies. So JD, 9618, let's take a look at JD. JD is suffering now a drop of a, a breakdown over the last year, now trading at 250, the lowest it's been ever since the pandemic. So uh, 230. I'm not saying that the Chinese crackdown is going to have a bottom anytime soon. Could fall further 10 to 20% as Beijing crackdown continues to actually be... Um, a question for most of the investors, not just in the U.S., but global. Let's take a look uh, at um, what's happening with the U.S. companies. In terms of U.S., what happened last night was really um, still continuous strength in U.S. flows for the companies that handle cybersecurity. Sentinel-1 trading at about $50, up 6%. So we're going to assume that CrowdStrike, this 265, is going to continue to stay all-time highs. Take a look at the companies which we said are going to be resilient. Zoom Video trading at $373. Avalara trading $168. Amazon $37. Peloton $122. The Trade Desk $81. eBay $73. PayPal $307. Palo Alto Network still teetering at $400. Nike $165. 
Square 262, DocuSign 306, CrowdStrike 265, Zscaler 235, C Limited 290, Twilio 398, Shopify 1582. If you will wonder why these expensive uh, technology names are actually trading at very expensive nosebleed price to sales valuations, it's because right now, just like what, what we said with Agora, it's actually an infrastructure in the internet. And when we're talking about the likes of Delta variant or COVID-19 fears, if people are actually forced to do their businesses online, you have no choice but to actually protect yourself with cybersecurity hacking and remote work collaboration and cashless systems. And all of the companies that I said a while ago are these U.S. names. Now, U.S. and also Chinese infrastructure plays, in my view, are supposed to be um, a safe play which shouldn't be actually um, related to all of these brouhaha happening in the world. Now, um, let's take a look as well why last night um, the movement in, um, in value names are actually rising. They are your reopening names. Last night, your oil went up. Your airlines started went up. Basically, these are all reopening themes. AMC trading at $40. Funko, 19 Playboy, $30. I'd say that Funko and Playboy was a function of the benefit from NFTs, the non-fungible tokens, as crypto was rising very well last night with Riot, uh, Riot Blockchain, MicroStrategy, Riot MSTR. All of the crypto-related names were rising. Even a Chinese name like BTBT Digital was up 100% last night. So uh, we are seeing that the market is actually moving in and out between defense, uh, reopening themes, as well as the stay-at-home theme. So we're seeing that the entire market is actually um, just afraid of Chinese tech in general. Now, um, as for the cannabis, we did see a drop last night from U.S. cannabis. But I'd say that uh, it's actually more of a, a neutral zone. Um, they are actually steady. Uh, your App Harvest, your Sundial, Organigram, Kronos, ACB, Tilray, Grow Generation, they're able to stay uh, with their higher end supports. So um, <clears throat> I don't think that cannabis in general is really getting sold down. So just really one particular sector, which is Chinese tech. Asian equities today are still invest are still gonna look to the US after they're touching their year-to-date lows for the year. So um Bitcoin is actually consolidating. Let's take a look at the cryptocurrencies. Let's go to Coin Market Cap to see uh the movement. Your Bitcoin is still trading thirty-seven thousand dollars, Ethereum two thousand two hundred dollars, Binance three hundred dollars, Cardano one dollar twenty-five, Ripple sixty-two cents. Dogecoin 20 cents, Uniswap 18, Bitcoin Cash 476, Litecoin 130 dollars, Chainlink 18, Solana 28, Polygon 98 cents, Ethereum Classic 48. So your top 20 names are actually just getting some profit taking after a huge run up for the last seven days. So I don't see a, a huge problem with cryptocurrencies. Uh, it's just a normal um, up down the normal volatility of your crypto. So the market is really quite unpredictable these days. Um, but what we could have offer you is uh, to see the value in um, in some Chinese names that are really getting sold down. So, of course, uh, we're not saying that the Chinese stocks will not fall. But um, it looks to be a place where it's important to take a look at what's happening rather than just panic selling everything out of the blue. Okay. Um, that's it. So uh, we, we'd like you to actually explore Agora API. API at about 25 to 15 looks to be a buying opportunity. Thank you. That's it. Bye.